Hey guys, welcome to Goa. Do you know guys, Goa has more than 7,000 bars. It's also the smallest state, but with the highest per capita income. Not many people know, but Guan can apply and avail a Portuguese passport along with the Indian one. You can have a dual passport. How amazing is that? Also, the first medical school and the first printing press was established in Goa. We are here to stay for 3 days and to cover as much of Goa as possible in the span of time. So stay tuned guys and be with me in my journey. So obviously on the first day we start with the beaches the Baga beach, Anjuna and Kandulam beach and there are lots of things like water sports and all to explore but we choose to explore this small beach cafe which everyone including Lonely Planet promise to be a fantastic one. This cafe can be seen from the beach but there is no direct way to go up so we went all the way back through our road and then came back on the other side of it. See to move up. So this is where the Clips Beach Cafe is and wow it has free Wi-Fi as well. Let's just check how good it is. And in case you guys are wondering where are all my gadgets? No, I don't have anything except for this mobile phone. Yes, this one. That's all that I am using to make this whole video. So as you can see, the roads have changed from paved one to almost a non-existent. I am still skeptical about the cafe and how good it will be. So me and my partner, we are walking up through all these bushes and stones and mud to find that paradise, the cafe paradise that everybody was talking about. And guys, we are here, but no, there is no beach cafe, except for a mesmerizing view, an amazing sky, there is nothing else, no Wi-Fi, no cafe, nothing. There is a village on the other side and a guy playing a guitar, probably from the cafe of the past. But yes, hey, hi guys, see the building at the back? is just some sort of lockdown structure and nothing else. Slowly planet was wrong out here. That's all for tonight. See you tomorrow. So for our second day, we thought of ditching the tourist site and go local. So we took this auto, the popular mode of transport in Goa. And yes, not any cab or any scooty. And our first destination is the biggest, it's one of the biggest market in Goa, called Mapusa Bazaar. Here you get almost everything. It's basically the market for the locals, not for the tourists. But you get antiques, you get uh, clothes, fabrics, you get spices, lots of spices, the Goan spices, dry chilies, uh, the Raja Mirchi and stuff like that. You also get loads of fruits out there. And most importantly, the reason we are here is we are here to find some local wine and this amazing cake of Goan delicacy called Bevinka. Guys, if you have not have this local wine and this bevinka ever once in your life, trust me, 
have it at least once. Our next stop is the Fontenas. Uh, the Portuguese settled here around a spring fed well, the fountain from which the neighborhood gets its name. Many of the houses and buildings they built in the Portuguese style remain in good condition, while others that are crumbling add to the neighborhood's charm and authenticity. Narrow winding lanes, masses of bright bougainvillea flowers, and overhanging wooden balconies all together make you feel you are walking in Old Havana or New Orleans Latin Quarter. This is especially true at night when yellow lights spill out of the small lively bar and restaurants in the dark lake and the warm tropical night air conjures the atmosphere of far flung adventure. Brightly colored houses are a characteristic feature of the Portuguese architectural influence. The Fontenas is full of them. Deep azure blue houses with white trims, mustard yellow houses with slate tied group, maroon red houses with dark wooden door and balconies. Each one is unique and many have names emblazed on white and blue tiles plate as you can see here. The Fontenas is not a large area, but there is lot to explore. You can start at the fountain itself, the original natural spring, at the base of Altino Hill. Was called the Fountain of Phoenix or Fonte de Phoenix in Portuguese. As you walk through the maze of narrow laneways, you will come across very old Portuguese built churches, a red brick wishing well, art galleries, small inns, cafes, and bakeries. The 31st January Bakery is about 70 years old and named after the date of a failed Republican revolution in Portugal. Here you can try Guan Sweets and Pavoris. The Chapel of St. Sebastian, next to the wishing well, was built in 1818 and contains relics from the time of the Guan Inquisition. Fontenas offers the visitors the chance to walk through history and discover the Portuguese colonial period in Goa. It's a fascinating experience and also fun. So much of walking and all these steps. I'm already feeling hungry, man. I quickly need to find a place to eat now. Wow, look what we found. A cute tiny restaurant, Mama Rama. Let's go inside and try something. So guys, this is what we ordered, both of us. It's beef thai curry for me and pork ramen noodles for my partner. This is the amazing sauce. Wow. Yes, yeah, uh, is okay. Okay. Spicy sauce. Oh, okay. Fish sauce and chilies. Chilies. Oh, okay, nice. nice. Oh, nice. Thank you. So for the third day of our trip, which is coincidentally also the last day, we decided to explore the city of Panji more closely and to check out a few churches. You know, coming to Goa and not checking out any of those churches are like missing a big thing of the state. The weather out here is quite hot and and it's surely not the right time to visit. But we came down anyways because we wanted to wind a strip up in a budget and also when there are lesser amount of food stand so you can explore all these places as closely as possible. Uh, 
and our first stop for the day is the St. Alex Church in Candolim, Goa. Raising out sanity from ever after, St. Alex Church, built in 1597, is one of the oldest churches of Goa. In a village where the inhabitants are predominantly Catholic, it's not surprising that the church is main attraction of this tiny village. The site where the church stands today was originally where an ancient Hindu temple with Navalnath, a form of Lord Shiva, as its region it is stood. A simple whitewashed front gives the church a stately appearance with a giant palm tree surrounding it. The interior of the church are lavish and elegant. It is pulpit and screen magnificently ornamented. The church was dedicated originally to a lady of Gudalpip. However, it was thereafter dedicated to St. Alex by an apostolic brief in 1815. The church has seven altars and grids with two towers and a magnificent dome modeled on one at St. Peter's Basilica, situated in Rome, which can be seen from the entrance. The Feast of St. Alex is celebrated in the month of July, Cite that there are many other feasts that are celebrated throughout the year. Our Lady of Lourdes in February and Our Lady of Assumptions in August. Our Lady of Mount in September and Our Lady of Immaculate Conception in December, which church we will be visiting very shortly. So our next stop for the city of Panji and to visit the Panjim Church or better known as Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. The Panjim Church of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception is placed on the hillside and just high above the Dalco Palace, built by Adil Shah. Standing on the gallery of the church, you can see the entire view of the lovely Panjim city. It's one of the Panjim's best attractions located in the heart of the city and the first church of Goa built in 1541. The colonial Portuguese Baruch style church distinct zigzag staircase are a 19th century addition. And the church large bell was originally in the church of St. Augustine in Old Goa. This church presents a simple and elegant architecture. The main altar of the church is dedicated to the Mary Immaculate. It has two more altars, one on each side dedicated to Jesus crucified and Our Lady of the Rosary. Two captive marble statues have been built on both sides of the church. The statues are of St. Peter and St. Paul. To the right side of the main altar, you will find a chapel of St. Francis Xavier. On 8th of December every year, the Feast of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception Church is organized in this very square of Panjim City. So with this visit, our trip to Goa finally comes to an end and we will shortly move on our way to the airport. So if you will ask, had we covered enough? It's obviously not. There is so much to see in Goa and three days is never enough, even three months. It's a place where you don't visit, it's a place where you stay, where you experience the calmness, the serenity, the peaceful atmosphere, the people around, the love, their work, everything in between. We'll definitely come another time and maybe a lot. But in the meantime, if you did like our first endeavor in making this video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel so that we can entice you with more videos in the future. Till next time, see you, goodbye.